So the first thing that I was going to go through was uh, just explaining to everybody who hasn't seen what we do. It's a little presentation of who we are and what we do. So let me figure this out. Oh, shit. <laughs> Presenter view, and now I get to share this shit. Can you can you just mute Mike from here on out? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> all right. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Yeah. 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 Right. That's all I see. Is the Pacific Northwest Missing Persons Project thing? Yes. All right. Well, it's supposed to be in presenter view, but let me get that figured out. There we go. Okay. So about us. Um, originally created in May of 2021. Uh, we this kind of stemmed from a family friend of Glenn Austin Oldfield II reaching out on Instagram and saying, hey, you guys are looking for Bigfoot in an area that my friend disappeared in. Um, can you keep an eye out for his clothing or gear that he had with him? Uh, curiosity kind of got the best of us at that point, And I wanted to know how many people were actually missing where we are looking for Sasquatch in the first place. And I contacted the Washington State Patrol, and they sent over an Excel sheet with 34 names on it. Eleven of them are confirmed missing in the forest. Twenty-three others are unknown, but likely in the forest. So to know that there's 34 individuals all missing in a, what, 150,000-acre par parcel of land is just kind of weird to me. It's kind of mind-boggling. So we started looking for articles of clothing while we were already out wandering the woods. And last year, actually, Kelly and I and Rowan stumbled across a memorial site for someone we didn't even know was that close to our campsite named Joel Pressler. Uh -huh. So it happens. It's people are right there. Um, you never know when you're going to come across something in the woods. Cool. So just um, search and rescue kind of gives up. At some point, their their job is life saving. Um, once life saving measures are done, they don't usually go back to it. So our mission is to raise public awareness um, of these cases and to provide resources and support and expertise to families and law enforcement uh, in order to bring these missing people home. Why do we exist? I kind of touched on that uh, search and rescue organizations and law enforcement often lack funding and personnel required to continue searching for these lost and missing individuals after the initial life saving measure uh, efforts are end. This is where we step in. I'm hoping that we can bring home somebody, but it's looking for a needle in the world's largest haystack. Um, there's mathematics that come with it. Um, the probability and statistics of how people maneuver themselves once they realize they're lost. So there are ways that we can narrow down a search zone. Um, but for now, we just need a good coordinated team to know what we're doing. So how many people are actively missing? And my what I'm going to read off isn't what you see on your screen. Uh, feel free to read through that at the same time, but it's a difficult number to narrow down. The fact that last year alone in the state of Oregon, more than 79 people vanished that search and rescue could not locate. They were called out to over 900 search and rescue missions. 79 people were unable to be located no sign of them were found during their full efforts so add that countless individuals are also removed from missing person list every single year due to the issuance of death certificates to families of the missing this is often a much needed step in the grieving process so families can access like Social Security, death benefits, pensions, retirements, or sell assets to make ends meet if they need to. 
but the change also means that the person is no longer considered missing to the state of Oregon or to any state. They're now legally considered deceased. So the person's just removed from a database. They're dead, but really the family still has no closure whatsoever. Any questions so far? So they're removed from the database, but they are still physically missing. Yep. Okay. Yep. Names are removed and names are added every single year. That's crazy. Last year alone, almost 80 just for the state of Oregon. So 80 a year we're talking, not just 80 over a span of five or 10 years, 80 a year. Yep. 80 last year for one state. That's a lot. Okay. Yep. Um, so how much does one of our operations cost? I put in what I believe it costs me. Um, my own budget of two to three nights um, in the woods is one to two tanks of gas, depending on where we go. About $100 for food, water, Gatorade. Um, and luckily, gear. I already own most of the gear that I use, and most of the guys do too, it seems. Um, but gear is where it gets to be most expensive to outfit volunteers. Um, but by also by camping in the outdoors when we're doing this, we're cutting down on our yearly budget. We're not having to throw money at a hotel. We're, we're roughing it in the woods, and luckily then we can utilize every ounce of daylight that we have access to while we're searching, which we did with Don Parkins. Yeah, I luckily have a surplus of equipment, more stuff than I usually need. So, yeah, you and Mike always ever, have extra. Yeah, if we ever end up, especially on this trip coming up up north, if you guys do that one, if uh, people need extra equipment, they can have it because I'm already slated for uh, being in Spokane that weekend. So, okay. And then uh, I'll touch on this again in a little bit, but. How do we engage the community? Um, right now, it's word of mouth. Um, it's either through our podcast that I run, um, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, which is mostly what seems to be the hot spot for us is Instagram is blowing up for us. Uh, YouTube is doing pretty good as well. And then interacting with the media, um, interviews, if we can get them on podcasts, and interacting with law enforcement, which has its drawbacks too because sometimes law enforcement can get pretty pissy with what we're doing um washington county sheriff's office wanted us to be search and rescue certified we're not search and rescue we don't perform life-saving measures so that doesn't make any sense um luckily the oregonian team that we went out with brought that up to the oregon department of emergency management and the department of emergency management said no they don't need to be sar certified and they oversee every search and rescue organization in the state. So Beautiful. we have their approval to do what we're doing. So when I told the sheriff's office to send me a formal letter telling me to stop, we're not going to get one. So. Uh, nice. Uh, our current team. These are the guys. <laughs> Rome. Yeah. Rome. Yeah. Rome Pelagi. He makes it out every time, man. Yes, he does. 14-year-old bad boy right there. Uh -huh. I always put in here because this is one this is a presentation I want to give in the future, but we are a dedicated team of outdoorsmen. That's that's all you need in the woods is knowing what you're doing in the in the woods in the first place. What would you do if you became lost? That's all really it takes. And then preventing yourself from becoming lost. And then our volunteers. Um, luckily, we do have uh, a few other people on retainer that we do call out every once in a while. They're the crew is what I call them because I've met them through Amanda's work. Um, but most of the volunteers currently are close friends and family. Um, but I would like to onboard additional volunteers in the future maybe starting next year at some point. Um, but they need to be trained. I can't just throw random people into the woods with us and expect them to know what they're doing or not become a liability to us. That's so, what I'd be worried about. Yep. 
so I want them to have wilderness experience. Um, part of that is going to be land navigation, which Michael Mike Palagi is working on a course from the United States Army to teach land nav to mm-hmm. future volunteers and to ourselves. Um, but experience can come from experienced hunters, people that operate in the back country, um, backpacking. And I'd prefer people to already have first aid experience at some point. I have some guys that I work with that are inter- inter- interested in this. They brought it up. They're outdoorsmen. We have cool. something close in. Maybe we can uh, we can give that a run. Sounds good to me. If you have people that you know aren't going to be a liability to us, uh, bring them forward to the directors. Um, I, I do have a volunteer application that they can fill out, but they don't have to if you personally know them. So, um, but any potential volunteers, including ourselves, we're going to have to go through either annual or biannual training every year, uh, whether that's a land nav course renewal or first aid renewal or uh, get permission to put um, tents, uh, clothing, um, animal remains out in the field, up in his property so that we can deploy leave it out there for three, six months, a year, go out and actually work on, okay, what does green now look like? It's been out here six months. Let's go find this clothing that we left out here. Or, hey, what does this bone look like? Or how far did these bones become separated from the original dump site? So we can actually train with wilderness type environments and know what we might be looking at when we're actually deployed in the field to do this. Excellent. And that is the end of that presentation. Any questions on that? Uh, I have just one quick question. When, when you were talking about interfacing with the community and and uh, getting word out, do you normally find a case and go to them for information and, and things like that? Or have you had people reach out to you and say, I have this person missing. They were here. Can you you know, on, on one of your uh, missions, you know, look for them. Yeah. So we actually have three cases, um, which I am about to talk about next. We have three cases on the agenda right now uh, that were brought to us by the families of the affected people. Um, one of them is um, who vanished in the Malala River recreation area. We looked for him in April of this year. Uh, the other one is Karim, who we are deploying on September 19th through the 22nd up in Squim, Washington. Uh, her family reached out to us asking for our assistance in attempting to locate her. And the other one is who disappeared from his home in the McKenzie River area, and he's now washing ashore. But it's not enough human remains to consider him deceased, even though it's his entire Oh, so, pretty good sign. Um, yeah, it's a pretty good sign he's deceased. <laughs> but the the other the other problem is Lane County has had other human remains now in their medical examiner office for over a year, and they haven't tested it to find out if it's his. And the family is still waiting to find out if it's his, so they can get a death certificate. They can't. How did you hear anything. about that case? Um, his sister reached out. They live in. And uh, she was complaining that the detectives in Lane County do not provide updates. They don't call them back. They'll go four, six, eight months at a time not hearing anything from any form of law enforcement to give an update. And so while we can't be political, we can't take a political stance on anything. We can advocate for these families when it comes to talking to members of Congress for the state of Oregon, Oregon State Senate. Uh, We can go up and talk to these people and say, hey, Lane County is supposed to be, the sheriff's office is elected to um, serve the community. This this man that's missing is a member of that community. Uh, They have a job to do to bring closure to his family. So you have bones in your office, fucking test them and let's get this underway, you know? 
let's at least do something. But with all like the the rape kits that go untested, to have human remains sitting in your office, it doesn't take much to drill a hole, get some bone marrow, test DNA. So every time I get a chance to tag the Lane County Sheriff's Office in a post, I I take full advantage to do that. So don't drive through Lane County. Yeah, do not go to Lane County, Oregon. <laughs> and don't oh, go yeah, missing there because they don't give us shit. Well, we know where to drop Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Cold in here. <laughs> Turn up the heat. All right. Any more questions about that? Um, all right. I the guess next little. All those people that oh. have reached out. Wait. Oh, um, Go ahead. How did they reach out to you? Like through the Instagram page? Did they? Is it because they saw your YouTube videos? Like, did they ever say how they? Came across like what you guys do. Yeah, the so hashtag, most of them. The posts or whatever. Most of them have stemmed from so Don came from the podcast itself. His son overheard my podcast. Um, the other two came from Googling um, missing persons Pacific Northwest search and rescue Pacific mm -hmm. Northwest um, okay. people looking for someone to come out and look. And they said that they contacted multiple law enforcement agencies, multiple search and rescue agencies and organizations, and even search and rescue said, yeah, we don't do that. So. Okay. And so now you guys are showing up in searches. And so. Yeah. Like people are seeing a new face, a new organization is actually trying. Yep. And the best part about us is we our funding does not go to life saving measures. We don't do any of that. We we are going to step up and do where it seems like nobody else is and take on, like I said, the search for the world's largest or a needle in the world's largest haystack. It's it's going to be a daunting task to try to look for these people, but nobody else is doing it. So we might as well step up and try. Anything else? Okay. Let's see. What else do I have on this agenda? Operating two screens. All right. So the next part is the director's report. So uh, where where this would be a mix of everybody sharing their stuff. Nobody's elected yet, so I have to keep talking. I can't wait until... Somebody is elected to do the rest of this talking. <laughs> so, uh, this is my director's report. Um, Pacific Northwest Missing Persons Project, or PNWMPP, in my opinion, is continuing to make uh, significant progress in our mission to raise awareness about missing person cases and to locate missing persons. Um, like I said, we have three cases on the agenda, one for later this year in September, two for 2025. Um, these cases have been brought on by the families. We do, we can self-initiate a, a search. Uh, there's a couple here in Oregon that I would like to spend some time doing. Uh, one guy has been missing for over 20 years. Um, should have never gone missing. He knew where he was going. He was a mile and a half from his campsite, vanished. Uh, no sign of him has ever been found. Kind of strange. Uh, when it comes to community engagement, like I said earlier, um, social media is where we're making a lot of our impact and through Google searches from families. Um, because of the Oregonian article and video that was produced about us, um, our YouTube channel is seeing a stunning growth. We've seen a boost of 73 new subscribers in the last month. Um, we are currently at 821 subscribers on there. Um, the podcast itself is averaging 1,160 people listening to it every single month with growth occurring every single month as well. Um, wow. I've seen a growth of about 300 to 400 listeners every month. Facebook is the slowest. It's not worth my the time, I, in my opinion. I'm happy that we can share 
Instagram post directly to Facebook. So I don't have to do both. Um, but I don't know what it is about Facebook. It's just slower than all the others. I know. We have 200 and yeah, we have 296 followers for the Bigfoot page on Facebook and 38 for the missing persons page. Um, Instagram, like I said, is doing the best. It's at for the Bigfoot search page. It's at 2,081 followers and Pacific Northwest missing persons is at 163. And then for the websites, um, both websites are seeing an average of 389 visits each month, which is pretty darn good because uh, we were originally at like 14 or 15 um, when we first started out of the year or two ago. And then the map I created is seeing the most traffic to it. Um, I started it in December of 2023 is when it went public. And it now has, as of 20 minutes ago, uh, 13,880 views on the map. And it's averaging 1,733 views every single month. So when I'm telling people, hey, go check out the map before you go recreating in the outdoors, find out who's missing around you, what they're wearing and that stuff. It seems like people are doing it. Very cool. Yeah, pretty impressed by that. Um, next part is partnerships. I would like to build more. Um, but in the last, I don't know, three to four years that we've been doing this, and most importantly, in the last month, I've gotten a little bit better. Um, currently, we are partnered with a media influencer named Scott Tompkins. He runs the Bigfoot Mapping Project at BigfootMap.com. Uh, he's been a great individual to connect with. He lives in um, he's an ARC GIS engineer. Um, he actually provided our names to an executive producer at the and either tomorrow or Friday or over the weekend, I'm supposed to have a meeting with this executive producer to discuss a role in an upcoming project. I don't know what exactly the project is, but if they do take us on board to do this, uh, there's potential that we will have this nonprofit show up in front of millions of people. <laughs> and as of this morning, uh, we have a partnership with the Backwoods Brewing Company. They are interested in allowing us to have pamphlets, uh, maybe merchandise and business cards in their Carson, Washington location and possibly Portland and Hillsborough locations. Um, so next time we're in Carson, Washington, we're going to take a sample with us, let them see what we're looking at for putting in their brewery. Um, and they said that more than they didn't say more than likely. They said they will put our stuff up in their breweries. Who did you talk to over there? The owners or general the managers or what? Uh, I have not determined if she is the owner or if she is someone high up in management, but her uh, she doesn't have a LinkedIn and her email did not have a title with it. Sure, sure. That's a pretty, that's a very growing, growing brewery. That's a cool place. Yes, that's it where is. we, for, any, for anybody listening, that's, that's kind of where we meet before we head up to the hills, whether we go in and have a beer or not. That's where we meet for uh, our groups to get together. Oh, it's that place? Yeah. Yep. Oh, shit. Love that place. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, to get into any kind of brewery is great because it's hard to get in anywhere. And once you are affiliated with someone, it's usually easier to get involved with others. One thing I would like to do in the future is possibly find a brewery with Sasquatch or a Bigfoot brew on tap that they create and see if we can work out a partnership that 50 cents to a dollar of each beer based off of that category that sells can maybe get donated to our mission. It's going to take good luck with that one. Those brewers, brewers work, are stingy. But, you know, I'd yes, probably push for just getting your whisper or Bigfoot logo on there or something. Yep. Yep. On their big cans. Yep. Something. Yep. Five but cents any, or any something like that. Good advertisement on that one. Yes, it is. Uh, and then the next agenda is the financial overview. Currently, uh, we have $310 per month coming in, 
ten dollars of that goes directly to our podcast. The the donor that did that is Kelly's mom. Um, she set it up that way, and the podcast doesn't cost us anything to operate each month because of that. Um, and I just spoke to her about thirty minutes ago, and she is going to be sending a check. It sounds like every month to our headquarters. She didn't say how much, but we can expect another monthly donation from her. Kind of funny um, how my mom help. will take your phone calls, but not mine. Hmm. <laughs> I know hey, who she, she contacted loves. me. <laughs> hey, she said she'd marry me, man. He only had two guys. Really has a way with mom. <laughs> she threatened to marry me when I was up there. <laughs> I just tried to call her right before the meeting. She wouldn't answer. Weird. <laughs> uh, Kelly Stolp's dad uh, donates two hundred and fifty dollars a month. Holy um, smokes. And, yeah, I know. And Marvin Libby uh, currently donate $50 a month. And my birthday fundraiser on Facebook has so far brought in $102. It's not reoccurring, though. It's just, just whatever we raise. And it's open for another eight days. So currently we have $415 in the bank with $815 expected by September 3rd, not including the check writing to us. So... We are slowly building a nice uh, financial cushion for future expeditions or gear that we end up needing in the future. We With that how being said, I donated to your birthday fund. <laughs> uh, yeah, she donated sixty nine dollars. Nice, <laughs> the perfect amount. Why am I not? Oh, yeah. My favorite number. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like it more if I was flexible. <laughs> yeah, there's a kink in my neck. Uh, <laughs> <I got kink. laughs> uh, and that's why I have to edit this shit once we're done. Um, no, you right. shouldn't. That, so, that's what makes it good. Don't edit it. Don't, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> Monthly expenses that are coming out uh, $48 per month for both websites. I've been fighting with myself if we need both websites, but I do still believe that we need both. Yep. If the board thinks that we don't, we can talk about that. Um, Zoom, so we can actually have these large meetings that extend longer than 40 minutes, is $15 per month. Those are the three um, things that are pulling expenses from us, and that's it. Uh, in 2025, uh, like I said, we got search. Um, a second attempt at it and uh, case for that we will need additional gear I know Mike has a boat a uh, canoe of some sorts that I have yet yeah. to see and apparently uh, oh go ahead sorry I'm, I'm hoping to get a kayak at some point but I would like us to have at least one or two kayaks to assist your canoe boat and, I have two uh, kayaks life jackets. Yes, yeah. life jackets are key I have a life canoe jackets. and two life jackets. Cool. Uh, let's see here. Any questions so far? Sorry. No. Okay. Um, did want to say if you are have a boat that's under sixteen feet and doesn't have a fixed mount motor, all you yeah. have to do in the state of Oregon is get a waterways permit, which is like five bucks for five days or 25 bucks for two years or some crap like that. And up in Washington, you have up to 60 days to register your boat if you have your permit in another state. And if I'm wrong on any of those points, please let me know. The last I thing I want to do is run it. into a fishing game and have them crawling up. Well, you're the one that brought it up. You look it up. <laughs> no, somebody else tell me right. Tell me wrong. <laughs> Um, I'll talk. I'll actually I'll, reach out to Fishing Game and see what the heck they think. Cool, that's a good idea. Yeah. Go straight to them. So for operational updates at this point, we currently, like I said, have four dedicated searchers: Kelly, Mike, Alberto, and myself. Um, but we have a reserve of seven other volunteers: Ryan, Vidal, James, Craig, Cole. And my little brother, maybe, uh, Trevor. As I said earlier, I'd like to onboard others in the future. 
but it'll take vetting. I want to make sure that they are people that we can trust to be around us. Um, what age are we talking about? In Israel, uh, he's 15. Be, so here, I was actually going to say that. So for minors, we do have two minors on the on the team. We have Rowan and Israel. Um, yeah. Israel's more than fine to come with us because he's your kid. Yeah. I do not want somebody else's kid no. from outside of our family and close circle joining us. So no. the age that I that I want to deploy with us is that I prefer 21. We drink at camp sometimes. What? Every time. No. <laughs> uh, I, I would prefer to have a, t- a 21 and up. So. You guys drink. I swim. Yeah, you swim in your drink. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little fly. Uh, All right. Let's. And then uh, um, I did want to put out real quick. Oh, yeah. Before I get to my parking spot, here, I am vetting my uh uh, uh the FM three dash two five point two six, which is your Army field manual for land navigation. It needs some updating. So in case we get some female volunteers, they're not feeling all. Hurt that it only says he. Okay. And I'm going to get down to the meat and potatoes of that on that thing. And then there'll be a secondary follow up, um, maybe a little bit more in depth on not just the, the basics, but tricks that you can do. Uh, knowledge that we know from hands on, basically yep. terrain association and how to navigate that way. That's all I'm putting out for that. Cool. That actually gets me on to the next topic I was going to bring up. Courses that I believe are going to be taught in the house. Um, Mike Pelagi is a former uh, Army U.S. Army sergeant. Um, he is going to teach land nav, like you just said. Um, I will be teaching evidence search tactics, pretty much how to conduct grid searches, what you're looking for, stuff like that. Um and then currently, I would like to find someone to teach first aid and at some point wilderness first aid in house. The reason for this is that it might cost us money to get someone certified to do it, but I have a big enough location here and it's our headquarters. We can then have members of the public come here, pay us to become certified or just CPR first aid or wilderness first aid certified. And they would pay us in order to get certified, but it would be some kind of revenue that comes to the nonprofit from that. I might be interested in that. See what we can do with that. Yep. Mike, I have long term goals. Mike, you you were a combat lifesaver in the Army, right? Yeah, you do not want me giving you an ID. Okay. Well, that's not what we're talking about here. (laughs) Uh, Yes, I was a combat lifesaver. And, uh, we, we and both were, really yeah. Be, yeah. I regularly have to be uh, CPR certified every year. Yep, we both yep. are. Are you? Yeah. And uh, as I was telling Mike before this, um, I want to know if land nav and any other course should be annual or biannual training. So either once a year you renew, or every two years you renew. But in some way, we need to have our team actively renewing so that we show that we're keeping up with continued education for our guys and, and girls. Excellent. Yeah. Um, as of that, um, I'm wrapping it up. In conclusion, um, it's my belief that we're already doing great. We're, we're on a, a good roll. We've been kicking ass along the way. Um, I would like to locate additional donors um, maybe attempt to gain some kind of corporate sponsors or donors as well um, and come up with fundraising opportunities. I've been talking to the Gales Creek Tavern that is right here in town. Um, they are interested in hosting either a bingo night or a trivia night, and they do bingo every Wednesday with maybe some of the proceeds coming to us. Um, they said that they might want us to host it, so I might get suckered into hosting something. But That'd be um, awesome. If we need to get some swag out there. Yep. 
And if we all come out and even some of us show up and just meet and greet with the team before or even people watching us interact with each other while we're hosting something, we'll build rapport with the communities and yep. hopefully continue gaining new followers, donors and growing from there. But so far, I think we're we're really doing what we need to be doing. And I'm, I'm proud of what we've accomplished so far in the last two months. Yeah, the shirts, the shirts are cool, too, man. Like the shirts, the ones we got in the mail were good. I think getting uh, orange shirts like that is a good direction to go for our search and rescue for sure. Yep. Or the search, excuse me, the search. Yep. So that's the end of my most of my talking points. Uh, does anybody have any questions? No. No. Okay. Anything you want to add? The roll appointment from the vote tonight? Yeah, we are actually moving on to that. Oh. So I've covered everything else. Now it's going to come down to the roles that we have. And I wrote it down on a piece of paper because I'm old. So the four roles that we have right now open for the board is chairperson, vice chairperson, or vice Chairman, Vice Chairman, Secretary, and Treasurer. I know that Marv wants to be nominated for either Chairperson or Vice Chairperson. Um, Caroline, I know that you want to be nominated for Treasurer, which I super appreciate. And we have an opening for Secretary. The directors can also be part of um, these board nominations as well. So does anybody want to be nominated for chairperson or chairman? Who said that? Daryl. Daryl? I got your chairperson right here. Yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, if nobody uh, wants right. to do it, I know Marv would volunteer for that. Yep. I'll volunteer Marv for chairperson. Okay. Is that what we're doing? Does anybody Nominating. say no? Nominating. Sounds good. All right. He's a chairman. Marv for chairperson. All right. I don't have anything to write with. I didn't bring my pen up, so I'll do it over here. All right, um, vice chairman of the board. So when uh, Marv is unavailable, you will uh, be the person that I contact to share updates, and you can also request board meeting starts or um, schedule them for us. But who would like to be vice chairman of the board? I can Comes be a nomination. Daryl, okay. Excellent. Yeah, I'm just beating two. Yeah. All right. On that. So, all right, Daryl, you are oh, vice chairman. Yes. Yes. Sorry, I'm taking notes. Daryl is vice chairman of the board. Excellent. All right, secretary. Okay. Who wants to take notes for the meetings? I can do that. Shit, I don't mind. Anybody else? Done. I can't even read my own handwriting. What are you talking about? I have the best handwriting in the group, which is really sad with my Parkinson's. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Damn. All right, Libby. Uh, or everybody, everybody want to vote? It sounds like it's just Libby that wants to be secretary. Roger. I'm Good vote. Will I be her secretary? Thank you. Okay, awesome. Libby, you are secretary. And then treasurer. Up for nomination is Caroline. Does anybody else want to put in for having to do math and taxes? Oh, I'm Thank really you. good without math. No. <laughs> Mike, you're not even in the running. Uh, I kind of want to take it over. No. <laughs> Thank you, Caroline. Thank you, Caroline. No problem. Thank All you, right. Carol. Carol is 
There's going to be a million dollars in this fund soon, so we laugh uh-huh. right now. This is... We already have more money no, than I thought we were ever going to have. All right. Carol is treasurer. Uh, one of the next things I have to do is fill out paperwork and send it for you to sign. And then we have to mail it to the state of Oregon. And uh, unfortunately, uh, your guys' address don't have to be included, but your names do. So um, I'll send it to you to fill out or we'll meet and fill it out. But uh, we have to send the state 50 bucks and your names will be on the state corporation list of organizations. Uh, just list my address as your address for the headquarters. Um, that way your shit's not public. Just because we do look at possible homicides and uh, with that comes some increased risk. So I don't mind my home being the headquarters for now, but I can't put it as a PO box in it. It's weird. It's a weird situation. So I'm well prepared to defend my house if I have to, but (laughs) I don't need anybody else to worry about their personal safety by being on this board. Um, with that being said, we are, that's it. We are, we're good to go. If anybody has any questions, um, the only thing that I would expect from you guys from here on is, uh, speaking about us when you get the chance to, um, campaigning for us in some way, shape or form, whether that's corporations, you know, or businesses, um, individual donors, but just speaking about what we are doing out here in the field and trying to make a difference and selling what we do to people. Will do, man. Thanks for having the meeting. Thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Does anybody have anything, or are we are we good nope. to uh, call an adjournment? I second, I second that motion. motion. <laughs> yeah, I'll third that motion. Oh. Daryl, Libby. No. I'm good. good. Thanks for joining right. us, guys. Yeah. Thank you. There will be a copy of this at some point on the Google Drive for everybody to watch. It'll be under the uh, board folder. Um, oh, and the last little bit, um, if you are going to be working on something, please um, add it to your folder in the Google Drive. And if you have any issues with accessing your folder in the Google Drive, let me know and I'll I'll help you through it. Okie dokie. Thank cool. you. All right, have a good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night. Thanks, Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.